great day, attractive thinker and visual encouragers around the world. Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Break, Give Yourself a Fighting Chance. Dr. Tony Hatton here, your identity coach and get to the root specialist at theattractivethinker.guru. This is where we support new and aspiring entrepreneurs with mental tools for mental healing, mental strength, and mindset maintenance. I trust you've had a fantastic and amazing weekend, week, day, whatever it is that you're experiencing right now in this moment right here, in this set of 24 hours, you've tuned in to this message and it's going to benefit you for sure. You've only tuned in because it resonated with you because the message for today, I couldn't quit if I wanted to, that only resonated with you because you're, attra you're an attractive thinker and visionary, because you don't want to quit. You might be going through something or being disappointed or in a frustration or whatever, and you feel like throwing in the towel and you feel like quitting, but there's something inside of you that won't allow you to quit. Welcome my co-host, Tishet Bradshaw, to another episode of Beyond the Break, Give Yourself a Fighting Chance. Happy Mindset Monday, everybody. We made it. We get to do it again. We get to have this week full of power. We get to do what we've never done, go where we've never gone, and have all that we deserve to have in this lifetime. It's a great day to be alive. It is a fantastic and amazing day to be alive. I trust attractive thinkers and visionaries that you have your copy of the attractive thinker on Amazon. You definitely want to have your own personal copy of this 726 page transformational experience. No matter what page you turn to, you're going to receive something that will encourage you, inspire you, give you clarity, help you see what you're not seeing while on your entrepreneurial journey or in some form of transformation in your life, some form of change that you're experiencing right now. You're going to need these tools. We need tools for mental healing, mental strength, and mindset maintenance. Keeping your mind propped up. There so this book is full. I poured my heart and soul into it after coaching attractive thinkers around the globe for many years and really understanding where they're stuck at, what their problems are, where the blocks are, what their goals and dreams are, what is their heart saying? And I wanted to package that so that I could share it with the attractive thinker generation around the globe. So you don't have to run over here and get this part of your experience and run over here and find this part of your success. And Try to get it at this conference and at this event and this retreat and this mastermind. It's all in one place because they teach uh, when you go to these places. Trust me, I've done it. I've traveled at different places, you know, spending thousands of dollars, booking hotels, trains, planes, yachts, um, uh, uh, trying to find that success that that I define as success, trying to find that thing that I define as success, listening to mentors, hiring coaches for thousands of dollars. And one thing that I discovered, Attractive Thinker, is they can give you what's outside of you, but nobody can give you what's already inside of you. Nobody can unlock what's going on inside of your heart. And this resource, the Attractive Thinker book on Amazon, will give you the tools to do just that. When we talk about, I couldn't quit if I wanted to, that's a different type of person to shed. That is not an average mindset there. That's a different kind of, think about that topic. I couldn't, I couldn't quit even if I wanted to. You mean you want to do something, but you can't. That means something else is working inside of you. Something else has taken the, the driver's seat while you took the back seat because you wanted to quit, but the other entity, the other being, the other strength in you wanted to keep going. They couldn't quit. And that, that we enter into a struggle when we enter into that space. And mo most of the time to shed, it happens when we're in unfamiliar territory, when we, we're surrounded, when we find ourselves in a place where that we don't recognize, when we're entering into a break, something that broke our heart, something that overwhelmed us, something that frustrated us, something that caught us on the blind side, something that we did not expect. And we enter into this space and now we feel lost 
And now the circumstances reflect something that would cause a person to want to quit. But because you're an attractive thinker and visionary, that thing, that greatness inside of you doesn't have a quit mentality. So you can't quit where there's no quit mentality because everything is mindset. You can't quit attractive thinker where there is no quit mentality. So the human side of you wants to quit, but the greater side of you doesn't have a quitter's mentality. So you find yourself moving forward when you really want to pull back. You find yourself taking steps ahead when you really want to take steps back. You find yourself getting up and still functioning in life and still going after that dream and building your life the way you desire when you feel like doing nothing. You don't want to do that anymore. I, I remember different spaces and times in my life to shed, whereas I felt just like that. I knew there was greatness in me. I had already come to that resolve many, many years before the break. I already knew I was different. I knew there was something different about me. I already knew that I had uh, that unstoppable power. I already knew that, but it didn't exempt me from experiencing life. It didn't exempt me from being human and wanting to quit. Attractive thinker, we can talk to you and visionaries around the world. We can talk to you like this because we know you get it. You have greatness in you, that, that unstoppable force and spirit in you, yet you experience something whereas you want to stop. You want to quit and you've even entered into spaces where as you didn't know that you could go further. You thought this was it for you. You thought you were down for the count. You thought you were out. You thought that there was no more um, reaching forward or creating or being or no more joy. You, if, you, if you're like me, you've entered into spaces where you never thought you would smile again. Smile for what? You never thought that there would be anything else that could happen or, or or you would experience in your life that will put a smile on your face or bring you real joy because of the space that you were currently in. I couldn't quit if I tried. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't quit because there's something inside of you that's greater than you. You should write that down in your attractive thinker notebook. There is something inside of you that is greater than you, whereas you may not be able to handle what the break, the heartbreak, or the change and transformation that you're in right now. But that other thing inside of you is well able, is more than able to handle what you're experiencing right now. That's why you couldn't quit when you wanted to. That's why you couldn't quit even if you tried. To shed talk to us today, the attractive thinker generation, the visionaries around the world, they are entering, some of them are entering into a break because we talk about these spaces. You're either you know, experiencing a break already, you're in it, you're entering into a break or you're coming out of the break or you're beyond the break. That's why we exist. Talk to us to shed. Absolutely. Um one of the things that you talked about when, when we're entering into a, a break, we're entering into new territory, right? So when a break begins to happen, everything shifts and changes. We can't begin to act like it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. You could try and go through life and pretend that thing didn't happen, but there's something on the inside of you that was disrupted, right? When we have, when we go through a heartbreak, you know, or something happens that changes our daily routine, changes our life and things like that. And it interrupted the daily scheduled program for a reason. And that's because it needed to break the cycle that we were going through. We needed something, you, you, you needed growth. You needed something new. Clarity um, needed to be um, entered in, you know. Um, also, Dr. Tony, you said that, um, you said that everything is mindset, right? So when everything is mindset, when we go through a heartbreak and it changes things, it changes your mindset, right? And the reason why we go through some things is because life has called us. Life, um, life's purpose, the higher part of life has called us. We don't go through things just for nothing, right? You're not just in pain for nothing. You didn't lose for nothing you didn't fall off stuff for nothing everything has a purpose and I know it's hard for some people out there to understand that everything has purpose I have heard people say 
What purpose do I have in this? Those are questions I used to ask myself, right? I used to say, well, what purpose do I have with losing this or losing a home or losing a job or losing a, a child or losing anything? What All I know is that this hurts, right? Mm -hmm. And all I know is that what I see right now can't possibly um, help me. But lo and behold, your higher self know, which is why you can't quit if you want to, because the your higher self is aware of your purpose. Your higher self is aware of the power that lives within you. Even when you're not aware of it, your higher self is aware of it. So when things change and we're hit with something that shifts us or something that disrupts us, um, we have to take time to, number one, notice it, right? We don't want to make comfort in pain. We're not saying to get comfortable in pain, to get used to pain, to just accept the pain in a way where it makes you feel like this is the new normal. Your pain is not the new normal. What's after the break is, is what your new normal is. How you come out of the break um, makes all the difference in the world, right? The person that you are when you receive the news of, of, of the thing that broke you when you receive the break um, is not the same person that you are when you come out of the break, when you have healed, when you are whole, when you have allowed yourself to transform from a place of being a caterpillar to the place of the butterfly. Everything in between that stage is what matters the most. What you do when this break enters in, what you do with that it makes all the difference in the world. Um, one of the things, Dr. Tony, I like to um, present to people who are going into a break is to have your mental, spiritual um, first aid kit. What and, and 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 we can start preparing things. Let's say something happened and you weren't prepared. You didn't have your first aid kit. So what you're doing now is you're paying attention to all you had to do when the break hit. And you take notice and you say, okay, well, if I ever burn my hand again, this is what I need to have. If I ever, if my heart ever broke again, this is what I need to do. This is why we do vision boards. This is why we do power walls. This is why we do journals. This is why we have access to videos such as this, because if a break hits, we need to be prepared and have things in our possession that helps us to either heal or helps us to grow into our healing, right? And the reason why I say grow into healing, because healing is not always instant. Sometimes you will have to go in and tend to the um, trauma, tend to the, not, and when I say trauma, not tend to what happened, but tend to the hurt that that trauma has caused, right? Um, a lot of times recognizing that you have been hurt makes the difference too, right? So what do you have in your emergency kit when in case another break happened? What happens if when you lose your job again? What happens if somebody else dies? What happens if you lose your home or you lose everything? What happens if you're abused? What do you have in preparation for that? Um, and, and the reason why I said mental and physical preparation, because we know what we need to have for physical preparation when something, when we get hurt, we, you know, you have gauze and band-aids and things like that. What is your mental band-aids? What is your spiritual gauzes? What is your spiritual antiseptics? What, what is it? You know, is it prayer? Is it, um, you know, what, what do you have that can help you clean out the wound that you just received from the break? Right. Um, and taking notice of that while we are going through a break not only helps us down the line, but it helps others who are experiencing a break as they're coming forward. Right. Um, who goes into a break. So things like beyond the break, we this is our way of sharing our first aid kit with you, our mental first aid kit with you. Right. Um First of all, recognizing the wound when, when a break hits makes a difference. Because if you ignore it, it'll start to fester, right? Um, and then what happens is when your wound is untreated, you become infectious. And so um, 
we don't want anything to become infectious because anything that has an infection ends up causing pain, ends up causing um, more discomfort than what's necessary. And we're not into living with more pain than necessary. We want to um, eliminate as much suffering as we possibly can while we're on the road to healing. And so we want to um, pay attention to what's going on in our body. One of the things we have to notice about ourselves, um, and this all comes from assessing who you are and getting to know yourself. This is why knowing and loving yourself is important. We have to know who we are at a foundational level, right? So then when something comes in and it disrupts it, we know where it disrupted. We know how it disrupted. We know how it changed. You know, if you understand how your arm looked normal, when something hits it and it slits it, you can then um, look at it from the foundational level and say, okay, my arm is usually whole right here, but now it has a slit. Now you know where to tend to. You know what to, what to apply to it. You know what to tend to. So when you're going through a break, you have to recognize your wounds. You have to face it. You can't pretend that it didn't happen. Your heart broke. It happened, right? And um, we have to get to a place where we accept that it happens, but we what we don't have to do is accept um, the, the continuous trauma that comes with it. We don't have to accept the getting comfortable with our wounds open, you know, walking through life with our wounds open and then reacting to life in pain. So what we're suggesting is becoming proactive when it comes to the break. This is why you gather things like your power wall and stuff. So this is our way of your first, your mental and spiritual first aid kit is a, um, is being proactive, is a way of being proactive when it comes to the break. Um, Cause life is gonna happen. Things are gonna happen. Um, you, you win some, you lose some, you really do. But every loss does not have to be a loss. Some loss can end up being a win. You can change a loss to a win, right? Um, people are going to pass away. Things are going to be stripped sometimes. And sometimes um, things are going to happen that you're not ready for. And it causes you to question all of reality. When you go, when we're talking about when you go into a break, it shifts everything. It shifts the way you move. It shifts your thought. It makes you really question what you believe. When you go through a break, this is not just a little itty bitty spread, kiss the boo boo and keep going. This is something you have to literally attend to. If you don't, it's going to cause unnecessary trauma and pain that is continuous. And that's what we don't want, right? And so um, we have to pay attention to our foundational self. Know how we act and react to life. Know how we are on a normal basis. What is the, what is the the foundational your foundational way of being, and then compare it to how you have responded to life after something broke you, after something um, happened that you didn't see coming. You know, just because you have a first aid kit and you have you know the mental preparation and you want to be proactive does not mean that you're not going to have things that happen. It does not mean you're going to always see things that happen. It means that when things are happening, you are prepared. Now, here's the thing. What if you don't have what you need in the moment when that break happens? Because sometimes that trauma can hit so hard that what you have is not directly in your possession at the moment, right? So you got to know where to turn to. You got to know who to call. You What is your emergency room? What is your spiritual and your mental emergency room? If that first aid kit is not enough, what is your spiritual and mental emergency room? Where do you go when you are entering into a break, right? And, and for me, I had to do this assessment when I went into the break. I had to understand that what happens in the emergency room um, helps in the breaking um, process, Dr. Tony, because one of the things, if you notice in a physical emergency room, 
when you go in there, the first thing they question is your identity. What is your identity? What 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 name do you go by? Um, where do you reside? Um, in the mental and spiritual world, what is your identity? What is your faith? What is your belief? Who are you as a person? Not what you do, not what you want, but who are you outside of what you do, outside of your gifts and talents? Who are you, right? Because you need to know who you are. And then after they take, they question your identity, then they go into um, what insurance information or triage, right? So what is the process of the mental and spiritual triage, right? We know what the physical triage is. They take your body temperature. They ask you a couple of questions. So um, they, 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 so for the mental and spiritual, it is, what is your, what you checking your temperature of your energy? Are you high? Are you low? What's your energy levels, right? Then you want to ask yourself some, some serious questions. When did this happen? When did this break happen? When did you notice a shift from your normal way of being to the way you feel now? How long has this been going on? What are your mental and spiritual symptoms? What are you feeling? What are your emotions? What's coming out of your heart? What's coming out of your mouth? How are you responding and reacting? What happened? So once we understand what happened, then we can understand how to treat a thing. We can under then we can understand what we need to apply in order to um, move forward. And this is when you're going in the break and you can't, you don't have everything you need in your direct possession. You have to then go to emergency services, right? And so emergency your your emergency room in life contains things that you wouldn't normally have in your everyday life in your possession these are things that you have to get professional um help you have to get coaches this is where coaches life coaches and um therapists and um psychologists and um church um whatever you need depending on your faith whatever you need to do it's a professional that can help you move forward because that professional has studied and have experience in the break, such as this show. We have experience in the break. We are professionals in the break. So this is this is, these are people that can help you to find the right thing to apply to what broke you. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you don't know. When you are in pain, all you know is that pain. Sometimes you don't have the answer. So when you have people like the attractive thinker dot guru, when you have the people like the visual encouragement, when you have these people, these people be are able to help you to find a solution because every solution ain't for everybody. That's one thing we gotta be certain. You can't give everybody the same message. It is not a one size fit all. Mm -hmm. you have to be specific to what your trauma is you have to be specific to how you are foundational and how we can get you back to your foundational self right so that now you can grow and so you have to have certain things in order here's the thing when you go through pain yeah you want to quit but sometimes the pain is too bad the pain is too hard to quit you ever heard that where the pain is too hard to quit Mm. it hurt too much to sit there and act like it didn't happen mm. it hurt too much to just take yourself out you got way more life to live life does not always have to be about pain 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 we're not making comfort in the pain we're not moving in pain we're not sitting here rearranging the room in the pain we need to get the pain out mm -hmm. we need to understand that um, not being able to quit means that you understand that healing is a possibility, that the more is the possibility. And sometimes that's all you need to be aware of is that there's more to life than the pain, right? And sometimes you become irrational, but that's why we always say whenever you go into a certain situation, the first thing you want to make sure is not to panic mm. so that you can make reasonable decisions. When you're going into the break, you want to make sure your decisions are sound and not just out of panic and you start making a mess everywhere because you're 
you're, you're, you're going all over the place to take you with the neck cut off. We don't want to do that when we're in pain. One of the things you just make sure is that if there is more to life than just pain, then I deserve to see it. I deserve to live it. If there's more to life than me sitting here and suffering, I deserve to see it. Sometimes it's just that. You know, it's just knowing that you don't have to know, have, and be everything at the moment of your break. You can just take one little thing that feeds your inkling of hope and go on that and just make the best decision you can as you go along. You're not going to know everything all the time, right? You're not going to be prepared for every break. One thing we do know is life is going to happen. Mm. Regardless of what type of life happened, depends on the person, right? Things are going to happen. Life goes up and there's ups and downs. You know what I'm saying? That just being in a realistic, but in a positive way, life's got ups and downs, but the way you view life matters. Mm -hmm. The perspective you have on that break matters. So you have to make sure you have the proper perspective on what just happens. Mm -hmm. I remember Dr. Tony, I used to ask you, used to say, um, you would say this statement a lot, and you still say it. It's one of your most profound statements. It's not what you're going through, but how you're viewing it, right? Mm -hmm. When I first went to the break, and I was like in tears, I was like, well, how else am I supposed to view this? I used to ask you, how else? How, okay, this, I just lost everything. How else can I view it other than I lost everything? Not realizing that there was another way of viewing it. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Knowing that there's another way of viewing it gave my nosy self the ammunition I needed to find out, yes. right? Visionaries, we can't let go of our dreams because our dreams are too big. Our purpose is too big. Our, that power is going to call us. That's why we can't quit. Yes. That power is going to call you. So if you find yourself in a place of a break and you feel like giving up, and you like, okay, just take my mind. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to deal with this anymore. And something ends up making you laugh. Something ends up building you up. Something ends up giving you an inkling of hope and you find yourself just a little bit. That means you got some power and some purpose coming on. That means you got something that went ahead of you and said, there's more to life than this. this. You can recover from this. Mm -hmm. the, when we try to quit, that's a loss of hope. Mm. I know for a fact all it takes is a little bit of light to light a room mm -hmm. you can have a pitch dark light and light a lighter or a little bit of match and it'll light something in the room you can add a pinch of darkness to a light room it's not going to make a difference you see how that shifts you just got to have a little bit of light a little bit of hope in order for you to understand that if I got a little bit of light I can keep going Mm -hmm. sometimes it takes taking one foot in front of the other um dr tony you always say i had to reduce my life to the moment sometimes it takes going moment to moment and just just being able to overcome this last moment if you are sitting here watching this you made it through the last moment mm -hmm. there's another moment waiting for you what you gonna do mm. what you gonna do with that next moment are you going to take that moment, take that inkling of hope and see what's on the other side of this pain and let something that let whatever's on the other side of this pain help heal not only what happened in this pain, but what happened before that pain too. So you turn that pain into purpose, turn it into power, and then you allow yourself to live a, a peaceful life healed regardless of all the pain you went through. What kind of message does that send for the life going after you heal that means if life come and break me again i know i can recover from it because i've recovered before i've recovered before i've recovered i've recovered i've recovered and next thing you know when you're going through life you ain't sweating the small stuff because you know that purpose got you you know that power within you is going to let you keep going so even if you wanted to quit that power that power the higher self the, the purpose, the after it's all said and done is calling you because you have a, because you are a visionary, because you are an attractive thinker. We don't break down, we break up. That was another episode that we did, right? Mm -hmm. We don't break down, we break up because we tried to break down. 
and it didn't happen. We tried to stop. We tried to give up. It did not happen. And so we had to see, okay, if I have to be here and I have to go through this, how can I make that count? What can I do to make this pain count? Because I'm not going through nothing for nothing no more. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have me sitting here singing a sad song for no reason. And, and in order to do that, you have to understand yourself and understand the, the, your, um, the, the things that you have in place for going into a break and being proactive, um, not just going through life where you're just cleaning up mess all the time. Mm. You know, being that reactive person where a mess happens and you clean up, a mess happens and you clean up, taking some preventative measures. How do you prevent yourself from breaking more than you have to? What's the, how do, how do you provide security over your mental and spiritual life like you do your physical life? How do you provide security over your heart? And not letting toxic people come in mm -hmm. by recognizing the toxic person. But you first got to match the energy of not of the non of being non-toxic so you can recognize toxic because it's different from yours. You know what I'm saying? And so, Dr. Tony, when you're a visionary and you're an attractive thinker and you got an inkling of hope, you can try to quit, but you can't, not even if you wanted to. Back to you. I couldn't quit if I wanted to. Attractive thinkers and visionaries around the world. This is what I want you to get from this message. I was listening to you to share and I pulled some powerful points from what you were saying, these gems, and I don't want us to miss this. When we talk about I couldn't quit if I wanted to, we're talking about that greatness inside of you. No matter what you go through in this life, that greatness inside of you is not affected. I want you to write that down in your attractive thinker notebook. Whatever, no matter what I go through in this life, the greatness inside of me is not affected. That one thought alone to share is enough. There's enough power in that thought alone to pull you through life's experiences, pull you through the break and the disappointment and the frustration or the change that you're experiencing right now, the transformation that you desire. We make changes for our lives all throughout our lives to shed because we're into growth. We can't stay stagnant, you know, stuck and stagnant and not growing, you know, um, in mediocre routines and things like that. So we're always moving and growing. When we talk about I couldn't quit if I wanted to, we have to have tools in place to support the greatness. Mm -hmm. Tools in place to support the greatness. Because like you said, life is going to happen. A break is a mental state. Write that down. That's a gem that you can capture, visionary and attractive thinker. A break is a mental state. It is not dependent upon anything going on outside of you. When Tashet used our theme phrase, it's not what you're going through, but how you're viewing it, that also can be applied to what we're talking about now. A break. Most of the time, people blame things outside of them for how they feel inside. A break is a mental state. It's how you are perceiving what happened, not what happened. I want you to write that down. Take notes on this. This is a, a shift. This is a different perspective of seeing and viewing an old situation, an old experience, a common experience. You have to see it different. That's the thing that brings about change, not the situation and the circumstance. So many times to shed, we hold on for dear life and for years longing and yearning for the outside circumstance to change. And we sit in a holding pattern, not changing our lives and not progressing, not doing anything different because we're waiting on this thing to change. Do you know how long one can wait? How many years can actually go by waiting on an outside circumstance to change? Those foundational pieces that need to be in place prior to any life experience is knowing who you are when you know who you are you understand change begins in you not outside of you when you know who you are you know that you're impacting what's going on outside you 
impact it. You influence it. How you be, who you are, your words and how you feel and the actions that you take based on the circumstance that you're facing is what brings about the change. There's nothing outside of you that can change in order for you to change or nothing outside of you that has to change in order for you to experience change on the inside. A, a break is a mental state. Write that down in your attractive thinker notebook. A break is a mental state. You know what this does? It takes our power back. It takes our power back. So many times in my life to share, I experienced things that really broke my heart and broke my spirit. And I gave my power to it because I didn't know that I could do anything different about it. I let it affect me instead of me affecting it. It's not what you're going through. It's how you're viewing it. Once you shift how you see a thing, you can change how you feel about a thing. Yeah. When you change how you feel about it, you've changed everything. It no longer has power over you. So when we talk about a break, I wanted, I wanted you to get clarity on what a break is. Although we experience life experiences that, that, that put us in a state of brokenness of, of, of the break. It places us in the state of the break because of how we're viewing it. What if to shed, we could get access to the attractive thinker book and get the proper tools that we need to strengthen the mental muscle so that the mental state is always in a state of preparedness. It's already fortified. It's already strong. There's nothing more devastating than heat hitting a weak person. There's nothing more devastating than encountering something really hard in life and you're not strong enough to handle it. Mm -hmm. The Attractive Thinker book prepares your mind. It strengthens your mind. It heals your mind. It gives you the tools to do these things. So when life happens, although it's breaking others, it won't break you. Although it has the potential to destroy you, it won't destroy you because you're in another mental state. A break is a mental state. Is your mind, is the lifestyle that you live on a daily basis, is your mind in a constant state of strength, in a constant state of knowing who you are, in a constant state of understanding your greatness inside of you, in a constant state of possibilities instead of viewing everything you encounter as a challenge? That's a that's a different kind of mindset. If you're viewing everything that you encounter in life as a challenge or something always trying to bring you down or nothing good ever comes your way or I knew this was going to happen or it was just a matter of time. That is not the mindset that will sustain you in the midst of a break in the midst of a disappointment because life is not going to go according to our plan or how we want it all of the time. What are you going to do when, when the, 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 the circumstances are contrary to your desires? Mm -hmm. How do you handle that? Do you check out? Do you quit? Do you, do you deny it? Are you walking around in denial? Like this is not even happening when you're right in the middle of a crisis, you're right in the middle of something that needs your response or needs a decision from you, but because you're in denial, you can't even respond we, we we want to position ourselves not for the break but position ourselves for strength so that you can prosper in life not to handle life as if all of life is about causing you pain we want to position our mental muscles strengthen it enough so that we can prosper through the waves of life the ups and the downs the highs and the lows the frustrations and the the uh, uh um, accomplishments the things that are favorable and not so favorable. So when we talk about a break being a mental state, you're either in life, you're either um, uh, experiencing life prior to a break, meaning you've never experienced a heartbreak before. You've never experienced anything that really hit you at the core broke you at the core. So that's a state as well. That's a place of being. You've never experienced, you haven't had your first heartbreak. That's a, that's a place of being. Then the next phase is you're entering into a break. Now you've had your first heartbreak. Like Tasha said, you're, you're in unfamiliar territory. You've never experienced this before. How do you handle this? What do you do? How hard did it hit? And you know how hard it hit when you check in with your mental state. 
Do you feel hopeless? Do you feel like this is over? This is the end? Think about that. Somebody to shed that has experienced their first heartbreak. Let's talk about, you know, we're dating, when we're young and dating. That can be devastating to a young person who's never experienced their first heartbreak. But if they are around people who are older than them, who have experienced a heartbreak before, they can get some insight and perspective on that. Whereas the young person may be feeling like it's the end of the world. They can't move on. They can't even think straight. They can't do their homework anymore. They, they don't even know where they are anymore. They can't, they don't know what to wear. They, they forgot to eat lunch. And, you know, they they feel like life is over. Whereas the person around them can tell you, I've experienced heartbreak before. You'll get over it. Trust me, you'll be glad it happened or you'll be glad that it did. Or, or, or you, you at, later years from now, you'll look back on it. You'll laugh at yourself. See, we have experience that we can share, but w because we're at a different state, a different phase of the break to shed. That person who is now encouraging the person through the heartbreak, they are beyond the break. This other person is just experiencing the break. They just entered into the break. That's two different states of mind. That is two different states of mind. And we have to establish our state of mind and then stay there. Make it our lifestyle. This is my state of mind. I remember Tashet years ago when we were host, hosting masterminds and uh, we were at an event and you asked me, um, what is happiness? And I say, happiness is a choice. That is a different kind of response versus what people, what, how people would normally respond. They would say, um, happiness is this or that. They would, they would attach it to uh, physical things. But happiness is a choice or happiness is once I graduate or happiness is when I'm in love or in a relationship or happiness is when I had my first child or, you know, whatever it, they attach that happiness to. But happiness is a choice. That means no matter what is going on, I'm choosing to be happy. So a break is a, is a mental state as well. These are states of being that we choose. You have to make a decision. Who do, how, what state do I want to be in as a lifestyle? How do I want to move throughout this life forever? As long as I'm breathing, what state do I want to be in? And does it fluctuate? Yes. But at least your awareness of this and your choosing of the state doesn't cause you to fall into a default state, which is hopelessness, devastation, darkness, depression. Think about that. When you don't choose a state, trust me, life has some states that you can slip into without your choice. So it's important to choose and the Attractive Thinker book helps you. It gives you the tools to choose your mental state as you flow throughout life. So you're either um, a person who is prior to a break, a another type of person you're entering into a break, another state of being is you're in the break. See, there's a difference between entering a break, walking through the front door and being fully in the house already in the house. Those are two different states of being. Those are two different mindsets. A person walking through the front door, they're glad to be home or or, or maybe not. Maybe they, maybe they look at the responsibilities that they have. Oh, the house isn't clean. I got to do laundry. I got to cook dinner. You know, th that's a different state. That's a different mindset than a person already in the home. The person coming through the front door, they have on their clothes from whatever state they just left, be it work, or church or run at the gym or whatever the person in the home they're comfortable they have all their comfy clothes their comfy shoes you know they have the music playing they're doing whatever they're doing maybe relaxing or doing whatever they do that's two different states of being so you're entering into a break you're either prior to a break entering into a break or you're in a break or you're coming out of a break think about that that's a whole different state as well to shed these are mental states. They have nothing to do with what's going on outside of you, the circumstances that you're facing. The, the next state after coming out of a break is living a life beyond the break. That is another totally different mindset. So to share, I wanted to highlight that to give our audience an opportunity to get some clarity on where they are in this break. Are you, have you never had a break before? This message is still for you. 
Are you entering into a break? Are you in a break, coming out of a break or beyond the break? This message is for you, attractive thinker and visionary. Take notes, capture these gems in your attractive thinker notebook. The next thing I wanted to highlight to Shep was, of course, nothing outside of you affects you like how you're affected on the inside. I remember um, a friend of mine uh, needed me to speak on behalf of their child who I, I was familiar with. They had gotten into a situation in school and they had to go before this board meeting with these officials um, to determine uh, a decision that would be made um, concerning this child going forward. Concerning this child going forward, were we going to pull him out of this gifted program? Were we going to kick him out of this school? What were we going to do as a result of this experience? So they asked me to come and speak for this child on his behalf. And I had a lot of things to say because I knew this child's character. I knew that whatever decision that they were going to make, and I said this to them, I said, I'm not here, I'm not so much concerned as to what happened outside of him based what happens outside of him based on your decision i said because years from now he's going to look on this this setting right here with all of us in this room trying to decide what we're going to do about this situation he's going to look on this and say i am the man that i am today because now because of the decision that was made now what would that decision be this is up to you i said but this one thing that brought me here today and that is this I'm not so much concerned as to what happened to him as much as I am concerned about what happens in him as a result of the decision that y'all make today. That right there left the room silent. And I want you to write that down, attractive thinker. See, this is about taking your power back. It's not so much what happens to me as it is what happens in me. That's what has the greatest impact what happens in you a break is a mental state and when you re see when you realize that your power is in you and that you have a choice see when we don't think we have a choice to shed that's when it gets really dark inside right. that's when you feel like your back is against the wall that's when you really feel stuck and you're in a holding panic it's like somebody got a vice on your on your neck and you just can't get free. But when you realize that you have a choice, like you said, now we got that little glimmer of light. That's all we needed. When, when I realized I had choices, I began to slowly take my power back. And when you take your power back, that power is enough to get you through anything that you have to experience in this life. So it's not so much what happens outside of you, it's what happens inside of you. And when you realize it's what happens inside of you, Anything that happens in me, I'm in control of that. Nobody's knocking on this door, going inside of me, shifting anything around. That's me. That's all me. And that's that's um, that's a, a a good thing, a good perspective to have about yourself because now you have the power to decide how you're going to handle this break how you're going to go through this break, what mindset you're going to maintain through this break. You said. Um, can you handle the shift when we enter into a break our lives shift into the unfamiliar we're not familiar with this territory so don't walk around acting like you know this game how this game is played you know what they expect what's going on you don't even know how you're going to respond to you don't even know what, what, what emotional how you're going to be triggered as a result of this so you really can't walk around like you know what's going on you have to understand you're in unfamiliar territory and be open to learning be open to growing be open to having to take some steps that you've never taken before and be okay with that. Be open to not knowing what's ahead, but moving ahead anyway. See, when you're in unfamiliar territory, a lot of trust has to take place because you, you don't know what's going on. You, you've never been here before. The Attractive Thinker book is a tool and a resource. It's a guide that fortifies your mind. If a break is a mental state, you need a strong mind to handle it. And we provide the tools for that because it prepares your mind, it strengthens your mind, and it it, it places your mind in, in, a, in a position whereas you can process. Think about that. 
if you if you don't decide or you don't choose to have a strong mind and use your attractive thinker tools in this book, then where is your mental strength coming from? You know, it's just like, okay, so you decide not to go to the gym. How are you going to get muscles? How are you going to get fit? We want to be mentally fit so that we can not handle life, but prosper in life. We want to be mentally fit so we can prosper in life, so we can deal with life, so we can recover from life's experiences, and we can be better. Our mind can be better because we have a prepared mind versus an unprepared mind. I want you to think about these things. They're very important. I took some notes when you were talking to Shet about the emergency room experience. You know, I was getting a lot from that when you were talking because one of the first things you said they, they want to know is your identity. Who are you? And that's the first thing that challenges us when we enter into a break is our identity. How many times have we entered into a break and the first thoughts we feel about it is, I'm, um, I'm not worthy, or I knew nothing good was going to come my way. Things like this always happen to me, or why me, or I, um, um, uh, other people don't have to experience this. They're happy. Why can't I be happy? It's always my identity. It's always my worthiness when you, when you get disappointed. Pay attention to what you say, what comes out of your mouth when some, something breaks your heart, when your heart breaks. It's not, again, because it's not the something, if that's a mental state. Pay attention to how you feel when you're frustrated and disappointed. It'll tell you a lot about your mental state. And, and, and you don't judge it. It's about an awareness. Okay, this is my mental state. This is where I am. Okay, I need to take the next step. I need to move up a little bit higher. Use the attractive thinker tools in the book to elevate my mental state so that every time I'm disappointed, I don't go there. I don't lose myself. I don't internalize it. Everything that you experience in life doesn't necessarily have to do with what you did or didn't do. There are plenty of stories in the Bible, whereas we call them tragedies that happen to people in the Bible, that, and they were good, upright men and women. It wasn't nothing that they did or didn't do. So we have to stop internalizing everything and making it mean something bad about ourselves. Write that down in your attractive thinker notebook and paraphrase it in your own words so that it resonates with you when you enter into a break or something disappoints or frustrates you. So they ask in the emergency room, who are you? That's an identity issue. You need to know that. Then they want to know, do you have insurance? What does that mean to us? Are you covered? Where is your faith? What is covering you while you're going through this? And if you are covered by who? Uh -huh. by, what, by what power uh -huh. powers you? By what power are you standing on while you go through this? Number uh -huh. three, they, they ask you, what brings you in today? What happened? What are your symptoms? You know what they're really asking to shut? What is your mental state about all of this? Uh -huh. What is your mental state about all of this? So if I was to leave the attractive thinker generation and visionaries with something today, based on this message, um, I couldn't quit if I tried or if I wanted to. I would say to recognize that now, now here's the deal. Even if you aren't at this space right now where you can believe what I'm saying, I just want you to consider it. Just leave it open. Don't shut it down. Don't say, well, I know that's not me or I know that message for, wasn't for me. Or, I, or, I know she wasn't talking to me. I'm talking directly to you because I was where you are. We were where you are. I'm talking directly to you. If you're in a space where as you feel as though something inside of you is broke has broken you 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 feel the pain of it um the mental state that you're in um you're struggling to find joy again you're, you're struggling to find a meaning for life again you're struggling to find happiness or a reason to move forward you have to first understand you don't get your identity from anything outside of you man can't tell you who you are you got that from your creator. You're, you're worthy just because you're breathing. 
and that's enough. If you weren't worthy, you wouldn't have been created. You wouldn't be here. You're not here randomly. I wasn't born randomly. Do you know what it takes to bring life into this world? Do you know what it took to put my spirit in this body? Have you even seen the inside of the human body and how detailed everything is and how these systems work together? And if one system is affected, it affects all the other system and all the tiny little blood vessels and lines. And this line leads to that organ and this pump and, 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 and artery goes here and this, this vessel and valve goes here. Are you kidding me? Have you mm -hmm. ever seen the inside of the human body and how detailed it is and, and how doctors have, have you ever seen a surgery? See, we're disconnected and removed from our power and how, how wonderfully we're created to share because we've never seen it before. I encourage you, go on YouTube and look up an autopsy. Go look up a surgery so you can see what's inside of you and you will wonder, you will see the wonder and the amazement of how fantastic and amazing you really are. Just looking at your parts and pieces and seeing how you see, you, we can, it's easy to take our breath for granted to share because we do it with ease. We don't have mm -hmm. to go to the store and buy breath and buy air and we don't run out. You don't have to replenish it every day. It's free. And you could do it without even thinking about it. So it's easy to take that for granted. But when you begin to see how the the lungs, yeah, the lung, okay, okay, let's say you have lungs. But do you know your lungs won't work without a diaphragm? Your lungs fill up, when you take a deep breath, your lungs fill up with air. What is going to push that air out of the lungs? Something has to happen. That diaphragm is a muscle that moves up in you that pushes the air out of the lungs. Without your diaphragm, you can't do that. So your lungs aren't just valuable. The, the, the whole respiratory system is valuable. And if any one part of the respiratory system is affected, it affects the whole system. If any one part of your refrigerator stops working, it affects, you notice it, and then all your family start complaining about it. If, even if it's a, a, a one of the racks in the, in the refrigerator is loose, everybody knows it. If the ice maker stops, everybody, the rest of the refrigerator works, why are y'all tripping over the ice maker? Because we need the whole system working. We benefit from the whole system and that's what we are. Our body is full of systems that work together like a symphony and create harmony. That's how valuable you are. And guess what? If Once you get over the awe and the wonder of the human body to imagine a God spirit coming into this body and manifesting itself through you, that's mind blowing. That's mind blowing. So this, this godlike spirit is greater than this fascinating body that I live in. You, you see, now what does that all go back to, to shed knowing who you are? If you don't know these things, when life happens, you don't have a leg to stand on. You, you, you have to fight back with your thoughts. What thought can I think that will help me step back into my power that will disempower this negative thought, this negative energy that I'm feeling. What thought can I think that will dispel these myths and remind me of my power? The Attractive Thinker book is full of them. We have a whole section with nothing but thoughts. So if you're running out of thoughts, if you're looking for thoughts and you can't find a thought to help you step back into your power, get your copy on Amazon today. It is absolutely life-changing. Tushet, tell our audience how they can get in touch with you, the visual encourager, and give us some final notes. Absolutely. One of the things I wanted to mention, Dr. Tony, with um, the emergency room too, um, is another part of the emergency room experience um, is what happens in the waiting room mm -hmm. between seeing the triage mm -hmm. and then getting to the doctor right you have some time to think about what's going on you have some time in the waiting room and 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 sometimes when you're in pain the wait can seem so long right a minute can feel like forever depending on the amount of pain that you are in mm -hmm. but when we look at it just being in the waiting room sometimes gives us the inkling of hope as well um, it, it makes you feel a little bit better because at least you're doing something 
towards the healing. At least you're somewhere where you can get the help versus home and just suffering, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we want to um, recognize what happens in the waiting room. And then when you get to back there to the doctor, to the one who can, or the specialist or the professional, the one who can give you um, the answer when they, when, when they begin to, um, they begin to come in and they ask you the same questions again to see if your story has changed mm -hmm. from the time you came into now. Did your story change? Did something else happen? They start to ask you the questions over and over again because they want to compare. Um, they want to compare notes and then also they want to be clear. It is, it is important that yeah. when we go through a break that we get clarity above everything else right you and all that getting get understanding right we want to make sure that we get clarity about what's going on so we know once you understand where you are now you know where you want to go now you know where you can move right it's hard to if you're in a if if you're on a road trip and you're in a car and you get lost the first thing you, when, even if you had a map or a GPS, the first thing you start looking for is where am I in this system? So I can know whether I want to turn left, right, go back, go forward. You want to know where you are. Once you know where you are, then you can be able to adjust yourself to go towards where you want to go, right? So um, that's, that's what happens when you start seeing a professional, you start adjusting yourself. You, you start, um, understanding after you understand where you are you start rearranging your life in a way that when you live your life you're not living in the suffering you're mm -hmm. not living in the pain right um one of the things i wanted to remind people is that we don't have to live with suffering right one of the things i told my daughter is i had to change my default way of being Right. My way, my deep, my old default way of being was depression. Where I wanted to go was a place of peace and joy, a place of creativity. I wanted to let the little girl he the little girl in me heal, let her out and play and without judgment and allow my the higher self to connect to um who I was at the time and 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 to merge who I was who I am as a person as a whole. That's kind of where I wanted to go, right? Um, but I had to change my default way of thinking, um, which means if I'm in depression and have been in depression for a long time, my default way of thinking fit the depression era of me. Mm -hmm. In order for me to change my default, I had to have things in my ear that match where I wanted to go. I had to have plans in place. I had to have my sights set on some things. Um, how did I want to think? Um, What's the language I wanted to speak? How did I want my life to be? How do I want to respond to life? I had to change my default way that came through repetition. This is why we need affirmations. This is why we need to journal so we can understand where we are, where we where we've been and where we're going, right? Um to change it and to change a default, you're gonna have to consistently look for hope. You're going to have to consistently look for an answer. You're going to have to consistently say to yourself, I can make it. I can do it. I, you know, I got this. There's more to life than suffering. There's more to life than suffering. There's more to life than suffering. You're going to have to keep um, applying things to yourself that fit the narrative for where you want to go. So that, so what happens is this, how this lines up with the emergency room is the doctor begins to give you a treatment. The app, like Dr. Tony always say, we want to give you, it's not just enough for us to give you information. We got to give you application mm -hmm. for that information, right? And that's important because you go home from an event and you have no idea how to apply what you just heard. And then you go back to your default way of thinking and your default way of creating and wonder why your life never changed, mm -hmm. right? So the app, the, 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 one of the, the uh, applications is to make sure when you when when you get off this video assess where you are be strong enough and open enough to see where you have been understand clearly get clarity about where you want to go be willing to take make consistent actions towards where you want to go um speak your way to where you want to go 
um, seek, 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 so that you can find yourself in the midst of the break. Find your higher self. Get connected to your higher self. Mm -hmm. um, an another thing when the doctor give us um, application, Dr. Tony, is sometimes when you give the ap application, you go home, you test it out. In other words, don't just take our word for it. Try it for yourself. See if it works. If it works, let's go with that. But then you have to come back for a, um, a follow-up appointment to reassess if that application worked. So you're going to have to try some things in life. You're going to have to be consistent. See if it works. If it works, continue. If it doesn't work, let's try another way. Let's try another thought. Let's do another thing. So when a break hits you, when we say it's not what you're going through or how you're viewing it, we're saying apply another thought than the one that you're used to. Mm -hmm. Apply another way of being than the way that you're used to. If you're used to being sad, how do you apply another way of being? You have to check your beliefs and check your faith and um, um, check that negative self-talk and use those affirmations until, the, uh, until those affirmations are true in your life, are mm -hmm. running true in your life. You know, if you're depressed, you're, you're saying to yourself, I am peaceful, I am joyful until I am peaceful and I'm joyful is normal in your life. And then you find yourself saying different affirmations because we're ever growing. You'll find yourself saying, I want to continue to be joyful. I want to continue to be peaceful. But you, you realize that when you are being a certain thing, you don't have to say it as much, right? You, because you're living it yeah. and you want to make sure that you turn that affirmation to gratitude. I'm thankful for being joyful. I'm thankful for being peaceful. So you want to apply gratitude. Um, you want to be grateful for all the other places that don't hurt. Some, sometimes a break will make you, um, will make you be grateful for the things that's not in pain, Dr. Tony. You never know how much you use a muscle until you hurt it. And then when it starts to heal, you start to be grateful that this muscle feels better. You start to feel grateful that I can operate this arm again because at one point it was broken and I couldn't do anything with it. I didn't realize I was left-handed. You know, um, this is again, getting to know who you are, right? Um, there's a lot of things that happen in this emergency room from the time you walked in to the time you left, you didn't walk out the same. Hopefully, if you got the right professionals, you don't come out the same. If you go to the right events, you don't come out the same. If you buy the right books, you don't come out the same. There's a change. There's a transformation. There's a, there's a um, information and there's application. So when you go throughout your day from this point on, you're not creating the same things over and over again. And you're creating the same pain over and over again. No, you have more information. You have wisdom, you have clarity, you have understanding, but now you have something that you can apply. You have things that you have to look out for so that you're not consistently choosing the same situation because you didn't recognize how you chose it in the first place. The only assessment will do it. And, and just, just to make that clear, Dr. Tony, when you come out of this season of the break, rather you are going into a break or in a break, or coming out of a break. When you are coming out of for wherever you are in the break, you're going to take everything that you learned about yourself in the break. You're going to take everything that you, um, that you, all the gems and jewels that you have gathered along your journey. You're going to take all of that and you're going to, you're going to assess it and you're going to have it in some place where it's reachable. So that if something else in life comes through, you can go through and look at your application from before. You can look at the information that you have, apply it and see if it helps. If it does not help, then you have to readjust, get reacquainted with yourself and, re and, and, and then um, reaffirm yourself that I can be happy. I can be joy joyful. I can be healed and whole. We're looking for healed and whole. I don't want to be in a constant state of healing. At some point, I want that ED at the end of that. I want to be healed. Mm -hmm. I want to be whole, right? Because that's a possibility. 
And so we want to be consistently growing, um, but we don't want to always be in the same state all the time. We want to keep growing, keep evolving, keep evolving. And so um, the reason why we bought this emergency room up is because we wanted you to understand that there are places you can go when what you have at home is not working, what you have in your normal default way of living is not working. There's hope for you out here. Um, you just have to be able to be willing to seek and to find it. Um, the attractive thing of Dr. Guru has a lot of stuff. Visual encouragement has some stuff on there as well that is full of power. You can use our power. That book, um, the Attractive Thinker book has little things in the back of it that I really love it that you can use for your power wall. Um, it, it, it was brilliant that she put all that in the book so that you can have something to put on your wall in case you can't come up with your own sayings that will help you fight when you feel like giving up. Mm. You need to have things in place that will help you fight mm. when you feel like you want to quit. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tony, um, another thing I wanted to say is we want to get out of the season of blaming, mm. just like we want to get out of um, guilt, fear, and shame. Blaming comes right along with it. Blaming everything on the outside because mm. of what's going on in the inside is only going to hold you back. So you have to get to the point where you accept what happened. Um, you forgive yesterday. You forgive the situation. And allow yourself to move forward despite whatever happened. Move forward. Don't carry the baggage. Carry the lesson or the blessing. Don't carry the trauma. Carry the lesson or the blessing. So that not only is it, are you able to use it for yourself for future references, but you're able to help people who are coming in a break when you're living life beyond the break. And that's 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 basically why we wanted to do the um why why I brought up the emergency room so that people know that there's an answer out here and maybe it'll give you an inkling of hope. You can find me on my website at www.visualencouragement.com. We provide mental support for movers and shakers, for trailblazers, pathfinders, and groundbreakers. All you visionaries that desire to move mountains but need help lifting the heaviness so that you can create a new vision for yourself. Go to my contact us page, put in your information. Let me know how I can uplift you, enlighten you, and encourage you so that you can live a life of fulfillment beyond a break. Again, that's www.visualencouragement.com. See you soon. Attractive thinkers and visionaries around the world. I couldn't quit, although I wanted to. And you can't quit, although you may feel like it. I couldn't quit, and you can't quit. I could not quit. Quit. We couldn't quit. Jeshet and I couldn't quit, although we wanted to. And you can't quit even though you want to because you're an attractive thinker. You're a visionary. You're a person of power and there's greatness inside of you. Greatness will sustain you. And we encourage you to fortify that greatness inside. Give that greatness a foundation. Support the greatness in you with the Attractive Thinker book on Amazon. You want to get your copy today. It is a phenomenal resource. I use it all of the time. I pour my heart and soul into it because I wanted you to constantly have these tools and resources to keep your mind propped up, to keep your mental state healthy so that you can prosper in life. Dr. Tony Hatton here, your identity coach and get to the root specialist at theattractivethinker.guru where we support you with mental healing, mental strength, and mindset maintenance. You hear us saying all of the time, our life's work is simply to make your life better. It is not what you're going through. It's how you're doing it. Thank you for tracking me. We'll see you soon.